Hello friends, my name is Nick and this week's plant of the week is Discidia ovata, commonly referred to as the watermelon Discidia for the ever so lovely foliage pattern that this houseplant possesses. As you can see here, I have a bit of an army of Discidia ovata. I have amassed quite the arsenal over the years as this is a houseplant that I really enjoy, but it's taken me a while to understand its care. So maybe I've been a little precautious and I have a few extras just in case, but these are each growing in different like methods and I have learned through their care what it likes the most. Spoiler alert, it's this one right here, this care right here. So there's three different ones as I just mentioned. There's this one that's probably catching your eye the most as it's just very interesting looking. It's uh, mounted Discidia. So this is just on a piece of cork bark with some sphagnum moss and it's just one strand of Discidia that's tied to the sphagnum moss. I think I had one that was like nearing its deathbed. So I just salvaged a strand from it and it's since grown a couple of leaves. You can tell the new leaves are the one at the top. I have this one growing right here in just regular soil. This is obviously still in its grower's pot uh, and it's just standard nursery growers mix, whatever it's called. And this one is obviously the one that looks the worst out of the three of these. I'd say growing it in soil is the worst method for growing Discidia ovata, followed by growing them in sphagnum moss, which I think is a fantastic way to grow Discidia ovata. But apparently the best way to grow Discidia ovata, which this, I feel like I'm kind of cheating because this is technically still in its soil, but you're gonna see when I lift it up here, all these roots. So we're gonna call this semi-passive hydro just because it's clearly relying on this method here. So this is a cash po or cash pot, whatever you wanna call it right here. This hanging planter does not have a hole in the bottom. It's glazed on the inside. So it's holding on to moisture. It's not like sucking it out. So there is like an inch of water in the bottom of here. I don't know when this happened. I guess I just overwatered this house plant once when I uh, first got it. And I guess the roots enjoyed that moisture underneath the planter and they worked its way down through the holes of the nursery planter down to the water that's underneath. And this plant really seems to love it. So if you are experimenting with passive or semi-hydro, whatever it's called, I think this is a damn good plant to experiment with because it just clearly wants to grow in that nature, even when it's still growing technically in its soil. So. Pardon me if I'm misspeaking or kind of cheating there calling that semi or passive hydro, but clearly it likes growing in this method. That's kind of just the point that I'm trying to get across. So these are also growing in three different light scenarios. This one right here is growing underneath a grow light, clearly what it doesn't enjoy the most. Uh, it looks fine and it's still growing. Like it has new growth on it. It's a new vine right here. There's a bunch of new little leaves that I see coming in, whether or not they will stay on the plant. That is more up in the air. This one's growing right off of an east facing window, kind of like off like a foot or two, but not like in the window. So it's not getting hit by that direct sunlight, which east sunlight is still kind of on the softer side, but you know, it still gets some direct sunlight in the morning there. And then this one's growing directly inside the east facing window. And you can see how it's sun stressed beautifully from that sunlight. I could imagine this would do perfectly fine in a west facing window as well. Even in a south facing window will probably be okay in the Northern hemisphere where that's like bright direct sunlight all day. I think this might wanna be eased into that scenario, like not thrown directly from the greenhouse or the nursery wherever you buy it into that bright south facing window. I could imagine this burning some, but if you kind of work its way into it, I think this would look absolutely fantastic. Probably pick up even more sun stressing than this one has in the east facing window. So experiment with that, but bright light, bright natural light is clearly better from my experimenting Grow lights, fine. Natural lights, much, much better. These obviously have all very different watering requirements, so everything's going to really vary for what you're kind of working with. The one that's in the nursery planter, I'm watering like every 10 to 14 days. I'm pretty lackadaisical. It doesn't dry out very quickly either, so probably doesn't have the most robust root system dancing around in here. This one I have to water a little more often because there's just barely any sphagnum moss. It's like half a centimeter of a layer of sphagnum moss. So this needs to get watered like every four or five days. You can push on a week. Just getting a handle drought really, really well particularly in these situations. Obviously, these roots with the semi-hydro, we're calling it passive hydro. I don't know. Uh, they uh, will not be happy if it dries out because they're relying on that water. So obviously, much different situations. This needs to stay wet at all times while these ones don't mind drying out. So whatever situation you're working with is going to work for you. Just use your best judgment there. Humidity. These actually do prefer higher humidity. Discidia 
they're very forgiving with the humidity, but like they, for, while they like drier soils, they prefer higher humidity. I wouldn't stress about that. Like, I don't think you need to really supplement humidity for this type of house plant. Like, it does not need to go inside a glass enclosure or anything like that. But uh, just something to keep in mind if maybe you're struggling with your house plant a little bit, maybe just experiment with increasing the humidity. The temperature is pretty straightforward. You are fine with your standard household temperature. I think these are good from like 50 to 90 degrees. So a wide array of temperature, I would not be too concerned. As far as the pests though, these are very closely related to Hoya. And if you've tried growing Hoya in your home, maybe you've come across the roadblock of mealybug, which isn't really more of like a, it's more of a nuisance than like a death sentence. They'll usually be hiding on like the undersides of the leaves or in that kind of like elbow crease uh, where the leaf petiole meets the stem, but not something to be worried about. Just something to keep an eye out. You don't want the infestations to grow. You obviously want to keep them at bay, but really easy to take care of. You're going to have much more issues with mealybugs with your Hoyas than your Dyskidias. But if you got mealybugs in your home, keep an eye out on your Dyskidias. And uh, the toxicity, these are considered to be mildly toxic, just like Hoyas. You might see some debated information about that on the internet, but these do pref uh, put out like latexy, oh my God, it's hard to say, a latexy sap. You can see right here, I guess I might be accidentally have broken this a little bit at some point, not enough that this is like gonna break off, but just maybe punctured it a little bit. And there's a little bit of this white latexy sap coming out right behind the leaf here. I don't wanna mess with that. I mean, I would wash my hands if I touched it. It's not gonna be like a big deal, but you also just don't want your cats chewing on, or your pets or whatever you have, or your children even, chewing on uh, the leaves or the stems because it will put off that latexy sap. And that is not good for you to ingest or get in your skin, on your skin or in your eyes or anything of that nature. And last but not least, propagating this houseplant. Obviously, you can see this one right here is one that I technically propagated. I just laid it on the moss. Sphagnum moss is an excellent way to propagate uh, your Hoyas or Dyskidias. You do not need to do it in this manner. You could literally just fill up like a nursery planter with sphagnum moss, make sure that you have at least one node submerged in that sphagnum moss, and it should root up totally fine. You can even put it inside like a plastic bag to increase the humidity, to uh, increase your success rate with uh, that propagation. You can even just do water, like any typical propagation method. I'm just mentioning this sphagnum moss since this is clearly how I propagated that. But any typical way that you would propagate a Hoya or even just like a standard golden pothos will work for a Dyskidia obata. I don't know if you can propagate a single leaf like some Hoyas, but uh, regardless, those will never grow into full plants. So I would just make sure that you're including a node from the stem in your propagation project just, just to secure yourself a better future with your Dyskidia ovata. But I think that's covering all the bases today. Seriously, such an incredible plant. I'm happy that I'm finally getting it down. Obviously, some look better than others. If this was my only Dyskidia ovata, I would not be talking about it today. But uh, yeah, such an incredible houseplant. I'm really happy that it's been growing in prevalence. It's one that you can find usually at your local houseplant stores in today's climate. And I'm sure it's only going to become more common from there. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my Patreon for even more houseplant content. Subscribe to my channel, of course. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.